Hello everyone, I'm Odi here from the Target Com YouTube channel and this will be another video in OAuth 2.2 authorization flow. So I've already explained the terminologies used in OAuth 2.2 like what is OAuth 2.0 authorization flow and what is access token, what is refresh token, what is authorization request, authorization grant, you, you can see. I have explained already whatever the rules are involved in this authorization flow. If not watch my previous two videos, please go and watch, then only you can understand the next videos. So we have already covered the theories. Now we'll do some practicals. I am going to use show you how can we use the Google Drive APIs and Gmail APIs. But why would do you need that APIs? Suppose if you go to Google Drive, like something called personal cloud storage you can upload some files or folders here and you can access it anywhere let me sign in so make sure that you should have google account the same account which whatever you create for your to access the gmail same thing you can use because once you create the account on google you can access so many services provided by them like google drive gmail everything you can use so make sure you should have google account if you don't have then you can create here maybe you can click on use another account and like click on the create account so i already created one so let me go to automation report by Amod. I've created this uh, Google account before making this video to let me log in with this. Okay, so this is my Google Drive and I uploaded some files. Okay, so if you want to upload some files, so maybe you need to go to new and you can up some select some file or folder from your desktop. But suppose if you're creating any application or creating some automation framework where you want to upload your automation report to a shared drive so that anyone can access that and they can view the report or they can view the result. So obviously one way you have like you go take the report and upload manually through here or you write some code so that automatically it will go and upload the files in Google Drive for you. So one way you have you can you can download the Google client libraries and you can add into your project and you can use that classes and interfaces or you can use the APIs to do that one. So let me show you here. If you go to Google Drive API, so go to introduction.google drive API. And if you go here, you see the manage files and folders. So you can see like create files, you can upload a file data. Let me go to upload file data. You can see that the Google Drive API let you upload file data when you create or update a file. Means you can use some APIs, right? You can see it is post API and you can use this API to upload the file into Google Drive. So now the first step before we use any Google Drive API or Gmail API, first we need to register with Google as a client so that I should have my client ID and client secret. We don't have any real time app, but for the testing purpose, we'll create some dummy app and then I will get my client ID and client secret by resting with Google. So, but before that, you need to go and read the documentation actually, because accessing the API is not a big deal, but how you do that, how you get the authentication, what are the steps, you need to understand that thing. That is the important thing here. I'm going to show you all the steps by reading the official documentation, because if, if you watch my videos after one year, maybe this video option will not be the same. You, you might see some different options. You should know that where you need to go and find the steps, correct steps. So for that, Simply you need to go to this one where I open the Google Drive API. But before that, go to overview. Okay, start from the overview. You need to read this and you need to understand. You need to go to home. If you go to home, you can see all those Gmail Google services like Google Calendar, Google Chat, Classroom, Docs, Drive, Keep, Meet, Sheets. Means you can use whatever API you want to use. And for all those services or API, you need to use the similar step. So for that, you need to go to guide. So you have actually five steps to get started. Create a Google Cloud project, enable the API you want to use, learn how authentication and authorization works, configure OAuth consent, create access credentials. So first thing you see, create a Google Cloud project. Click on this. I will suggest go and read, then only you understand the small, small terms. You can see the simple things. To create a Google Cloud project, in the Google Cloud console, go to menu and it gave some option. It is giving one link also. Or let me copy the link address. So let me go and open in the browser, which URL it opens. So since I have already added some accounts, so it is showing me this screen. But if you don't have any account added, then it will ask you to enter your Google account details. If you don't have, again, go and create it. So let me use another account, which I've created. Okay, so if you first time you log in, it will ask you what is your country. So it is automatic taking United States. Let me go to checkbox this terms of services and click 
agree and continue so here we have logged in into google cloud project now you can see here it is asking you to go to google cloud console go to menu i am admin and create a project so means it is asking you to go to this menu and here okay already it's showing so i am admin and here you see create a project okay you can click on this why i am following the exact step here because this will be updated all the time my youtube videos might be outdated after one year so you need to go to this documentation and get the updated step that's why i am referring from here so you need to provide the project name and some location so let me go here and it's self explanatory here you can give some project name here give the name like and i do not do part any location here so simply click on the create it will take some time to configure everything okay so we can see some dashboard here we can see my project name project number project id we can see everything here so first step we are done now you can see next step automatically here click on this here you can see that before using google api you need to turn them on in google cloud project means when to use google drive api when to use a gmail api so before using those you need to turn on those things in your project to enable the api what you need to do in your project you need to go to menu more products google workspace and product library go to more products so let me go to google workspace where that it is here google workspace and then product library then what it is saying click the api that you want to turn on click enable and simply scroll down and you can see google type api and gmail api so let me click on google type api and let me enable it let me go back you can see here also we get the option to enable api and service so let me click here and let me go and enable the gmail api as well Okay, so click on Gmail API and enable it. So we have enabled two APIs, Google Drive API and Gmail API in my project. So we are done with the second step as well. Now, what is the third step? Learn how authentication and authentication work. This already I explained in my previous videos. During development, you register your app in the Google Cloud Console, which we are doing. Defining authorization scopes and access credentials to authenticate your app with the API key and user credentials or service account credentials, which you are going to do now. Go to next step, which is called configure your app auth consent script. So what to do? You need to go to menu API and services OAuth consent screen API and services and OAuth consent screen. Select the user type for your app. Click on create, complete the app registration form, save and continue, add a remove scope. So if you see internal only available to users within the organization and if you create any internal app, so that app needs to be verified by Google. I don't want to get any internal app. So let me create with the external. So you can see available to any test user with a Google account. Okay. And your app will start in testing mode and will only be available to you just you add to the list of test users okay that i also now click on create then here to give the app name you can see whatever app name i show i will show you that where the, you can see this app name rc app or you use the same email id whatever i have used to log in into google cloud then you if you want to add some logo you can go and upload it otherwise simply you can ignore it app domain if you want to if you have real time app you simply can go and put all those details but we don't have anything right we are just using it for testing purpose and let me add the same email id as a developer contact information as well let me copy paste the email address and click, click save and continue after that it is asking you to add or remove scope this is important step here if you see my google drive api and go to something api specific auth info if you come down here so google drive scope you need to use this scope code so that you can perform whatever actions you want to do with the google drive so for the testing purpose simply i'll go here you need to click on add and remove scope you can see the same thing has mentioned here as well for step number four if you are creating an app for use outside of your google works this organization click add or remove scope okay and you to select the scopes and you to continue so simply click on add or remove scope and you, here you can search for drive api google drive api and simply select all those things because we we are just doing the, some testing right so you can select all those apis okay and also you can use mail right google mail so here is gmail api Suppose if these scopes are not coming, then read this one. Only scopes for enabled APIs are listed below. If you have not enabled the APIs in your project, obviously these things will not come. So make sure you enable the click on update. So you can see here everything got categorized here. Non-sensitive scopes, sensitive. Now this step is done. Click on save and continue. Now you need to understand what it test users. So while publishing status is set to testing. Okay, we are not publishing our app. You are just doing the some testing. If you have published the app, then it will go for some Google review. And after they approve, then only you can use it. So let it 
been testing scope but when the app is in testing scope then you need to add some specific users so that you can test with them if you don't add those users you cannot get the consent from them so click on add users and i will add the same my account only click on add so i have added one more user here you can add as many as users you want but i think there are some restrictions i think you can use only 100 prior to a verification so click on save and continue okay so we have support email app logo we have not provided everything you can see here we have configured everything now go to back to dashboard so we have done with these steps as well now go to create access credentials so here you can see that we can generate different types of credential here and i am concerned with the OAuth client id so you can see here go to api services credentials create credentials OAuth client id everything you can see here and same thing i'm going to perform here as well i see the one that option in left hand side click on credentials you see the create credential if you click here you should see OAuth client id api key service account you can see whatever mentioned in the documentation i am concerned or i am interested in OAuth client id click on that select the application type maybe web application get it with the name because it is not going to show anywhere the so web client one and you see the redirect url you remember in the last video i explained that once you once you just provide the or has a grant right so client will redirect the resource owner to authorization server and once resource owner provide their consent then resource owner will be redirected to some url with the code right so that you need to mention what is redirect url where you want to redirect the resource owner after providing the consent so actually we don't have any specific things uh, url or we don't have any real time application but mandatorily you need to update the url here and i will simply do local host only and now you can click on create so as soon as you created you see something over client created and you got your client add in client secret i will you can click you can download the json file here also or you can have the option to download the json file from here as well so if you open the json file here and let me copy it and let me go to json online editor and let me format it you can see in this json we have client id we have something called client secret we have redirect uri then auth uri token uri every will i think i will explain all those things in upcoming videos how can you generate the access token refresh token everything i will explain but the first step is done we have registered our app with the Google and we got our client ID and client secret. But make sure that if you are practicing yourself, then please go and create your app. You cannot use my client ID and credentials because I will be deleting this, right? So you cannot use it. So make sure that you go and register your account, your app with the Google and get your client ID and client secret. Okay, so that's all in this video. So if you have any doubt, please comment in this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe, and save the others. Thank you, everyone.